KBO finally come out with an appropriate named bike? I think they may have. Meet the new KBO Compact. That's the name, nothing fancy, but is it any good? Keep on watching our honest review to find out more. We've tested a lot of different e-bikes from KBO, and this is the newest one we were testing. It's called the Compact. You, know, you may want to call this like the Danny DeVito of e-bikes because it does look funny. It looks huge space for a step through design here, but that's to accommodate the foldable aspect of the bike. It's a very interesting bike. It retails for about $13.99. I think it's on sale right now for just over $1,000. But is it any good? Let me walk you through all the different parts of this bike, what we like, what we don't like. But let me first walk you through the features of this bike super quick. All right, a car was coming, so let's go take this on a quick test ride. I'll tell you exactly what I'm thinking, what I like, what I don't like. Let's do it. Safety first. So as I mentioned, one of the first things you'll notice about this bike is the awkward kind of design, but that's by design. Uh, you'll see here, it's super easy to get into. I mean, look, you barely have to lift up your foot for it to even work. That's pretty cool, huh? So let's go do this for a spin and I'll turn it on. It does have a very simple display here. You can see here, it shows you your miles per hour, your pedal assist level, your battery level, and this is my odometer. I'm only taking a couple, couple miles here, but uh, three levels of pedal assist. Also has the throttle right here. And then this is my recording equipment here, kind of ignore that. These are the mechanical disc brakes. Very easy, very simple. You can turn on the front light by just holding that down. You'll see the light button come on there. And uh, let's go take it for a spin. Sound good? Oh yeah. Okay, now let's see if this is a, I was messing with this, just trying to show you how this worked here. I was messing with it just a little bit to show you how this worked. It's probably a little bit high for me, but let's try it out and see, okay? Ugh. Yeah, well, that's actually not that bad. Actually it feels pretty good. Ooh, I'm in pedal assist level three and it is picking up right away. Whoops, I have my, ah, I always do that. I always forget my kickstand. So the one thing I did notice about this bike just at first glance, it does take a couple of little pedals to get going on the bike itself. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm gonna go to a complete stop, or at least close to one. And you can see one, two, three, Four. I mean, four really complete turns until I can get to the very front, which is kind of kind of unusual for a bike like this. Same thing is actually true with the throttle. I'm gonna get to much slower speed here, and then I'm gonna hit throttle. One, two, three. I mean, you can really kick in at two, um, but not, not a deal killer. Once again, if you don't know what you're getting into, the one frustrating thing about it with it being, uh, taking a second to, to turn like that is when, when you just don't know what you're doing and you're like, hey, am I, what level of pedal assist am I on? And am I on one or two or three? They all kind of kick in at about the same time, uh, which, is, which is unique. It's, it's a little bit interesting. I don't care for it. It's not a deal killer by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not a big deal either. All right, let's get this at a complete stop here. Whoa. And uh, let's do a little speed test. Sound good? Speed test. Now, is this thing faster than Danny DeVito? I sure hope so. Let's do it. Get going here. Three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. There you go. You can feel the motor kind of turn off right there. Not too shabby at all. I'm in. That wasn't bad, I was actually very impressed. It's a little bit longer, obviously, than some of the other bikes we've tested, but this is a little bit of a lower indie bike. Um, not, a, not a problem, but just something to be aware about. All right, let's do a quick. Now, does this stop faster than Danny DeVito? Let's find out. All right, going. Try to get up to about 15 or so miles an hour. Pedal this level three here, going 16. Three, two, one, stop. 
Whoa, I'm actually, whoa, geez. I'm actually very, ugh, sorry. I'm actually very pleasantly surprised at how good that stops. Now this is where you can kind of tell it's a little bit awkward for me. This probably needs to be a little bit lower, but it's, so let's lower that down just a little bit, which is more kind of a riding style that I like. The seat is probably about the right height for where you need to be at. Um, but let's just keep on going and see how this thing goes. There we go, there once again, it just takes that second to, uh, there you go, pedal assist comes on right there, huh? Very interesting how that works. Let's go take this on a, the hill test that I take everything on. This is the whole reason I ended up buying an electric bike in the first place was I was carrying my kids and I was like, man, I cannot stand to uh, go uphill this way because whew, it's rough. So I told this story before, but I was riding with my son in the back. He had a uh, little car carrier thing or little bike carrier thing. And uh, it was just the toughest like part of, of riding was going up this hill. Um, so let me get you stop up here and I'll do a quick uh, speed test. It does have a fairly powerful motor. It has a 750 watt motor, which I was a bit surprised by, but let's try getting uphill. Whoa, let's see how it goes. I mean, yeah, it, it, it actually goes uphill like pretty, pretty good. Um, you know, only up to 12 miles an hour here. Not crazy, but let me turn around and try this again here. I want to, whoo. And I'm actually gonna go all the way down here to show you about this wax. All right, let's do this from a pretty much a dead stop. All right, let's do this pretty much from a dead stop here. I mean, yeah, it's handling this hill, no, no problem. You know, one of the things is to look at is Newton meters of torque. I'll put the exact specs on this one, but I actually was surprised at how high of a Newton meter level of torque that it did have. And what that means is that more power is getting to the wheels and able to take hills easier. Um, you know, it is a little bit more difficult, I will say, to pedal with this one up, up the hill. Um, but it does, you can use the throttle and it works just fine. That's what I was using most of there when I kind of stalled there is when I took my finger off of the throttle altogether. You know, the, the ride on this bike is a little bit, um, I don't know if clunky is the right word to use or not, but, um, it does need to tune up. And I do recommend after you've put in, you know, 15, 20, 30 miles on an electric bike to uh, do a tune up. And uh, I recommend that for any e-bike, not just this one. Uh, I'm not a professional bike mechanic, although I play one on YouTube sometimes. Not really, I'm not at all. Um, but it's a little bit of a different ride and different experience than some of the other bikes that we have tested. Yeah, you can feel this again, like look. One, two, takes a good two seconds for the power to get to the, the motor there. I will reach out to KBO and figure out if that's normal or if something is not correct with my bike. Sometimes there are safety features for bikes like this, um, that, especially scooters, some of the high powered scooters that I've tested out, they uh, actually make you start by pedaling just a little bit. Uh, so I'll reach out to them, but I mean, let's try, let me show you one more time here just how slow this pedal is one. Two, three, four, five. I mean, five turns there to get that pedal assist up and going. Very unique. My mom actually tried this bike out and she mentioned something about it and I hadn't, hadn't really ridden this bike. And uh, I was like, huh, that is interesting. I had no idea. All right, so what are my final thoughts on this bike? Well, if you need about a thousand dollar folding e-bike, you'd be tough pressed to find something that has all the features of this one. Now I'll reach out to KBO and just see what's going on with the throttle issue that I talked about there. Uh, and it may not even be an issue. Sometimes they do that once again for a safety feature. But if you're looking for something more casual, something to go and ride around your neighborhood, maybe fold this up and put it in the back of your camper, this could be a pretty good e-bike. Now I do recommend with all e-bikes to make sure you get it checked out by a professional mechanic after what you put together. I noticed even on, on this ride, the, the gears were just a little bit clunky 
and that's the way all bikes are. I've been very fortunate to not have a whole lot of uh, bikes with uh, any sort of issues, you know, mechanically, just one or two, not this one, um, but it's, it's a little bit of a unique bike. For the right person, it could be the right bike. You know, it's probably not the right bike for me because uh, I do like to go a little bit faster, I like to have a little bit more, more control. But if you need that foldable bike, oh, here, I'll, I'll fold it up here for you in just one second, as soon as I'm done. Um, but it's really easy to fold up. I actually, one of the easier ones I've, I've worked with to, to fold up. And, uh, you know, it does have the nice big fat tires, nice big light, it does have the front suspension. I didn't mention that earlier. And it doesn't have mechanical disc brakes. So the kind of two things going against this were the kind of funky pedal assist throttle delay, which once again, may be a feature, not a bug, as the cool kids say and the mechanical disc brakes. Otherwise, like this bike is a fun little bike to ride. 750 watt motor and a good amount of torque to get you up the hill. You just have to know when that motor is gonna kick in, use the throttle. It's gonna kick in a little bit quicker than the pedaling. But overall, it's a, it's a pretty fun little bike. Let me fold it up and show you just how it works and then I'll give you my very last verdict. is this is once again exactly how it comes without except for this and this is my recording equipment here folds in two spots folds in the front like so and then there's a nice little latch here on the other side and you simply pull it out Oop. there's a little bit of a bolt that's in there and then make sure you do some good spot like that and then it folds up like that that easy, lemon squeezy, eat some mac and cheesy. Pretty cool, huh? You see here, I didn't crash the bike. It's just the bike. And uh, well, as you can see here, it's a very easy bike to fold up, to put back together. So let me put this back on here, latch this down here, lift this bad boy up. Go like that, put the kickstand down good prosperity and then you latch it right here that's all there is to it pretty cool huh if you want something you can fold up easily and you put it in your apartment put it in the back of your car this might just be the e-bike for you if you need something a little more high power a little more off-roady you may want to look somewhere else something that gives you a little bit better control over the pedal assist and throttle but otherwise it's a good e-bike for a thousand bucks it folds it molds, it goes fast, it breaks, it stops. What else do you want? If you have any questions or comments, please let us know below. And I hope to see you again real soon.